light some nerds up, shall we? Seems pretty good. Yep. Probably not today, Niviki. I'll start with, I'll probably do Tron tomorrow. I think Tron's towards the top. Yeah, we'll start with Tron tomorrow. We'll definitely start with Tron tomorrow morning. $20 for winning with the Karanos trigger. You're on, Brecken. Or just board that card in in every matchup. I didn't update the deck list. Thank you. Wait, did I? Maybe I did. I don't remember. I didn't. Now it is updated. Thank you for the reminder. Opponents mold the six here. Probably going to be fetch steam vents um, on the serum visions. So we can helix on two. We'll see what they're playing. If they're playing burn, we might just fetch a tap plan. Huh. This matchup's pretty good for us on average. Uh, the Shadowborn Apostle deck was the first one we played today, and it'll be up on YouTube after I'm done streaming. No, I don't... I don't do things... All right, maybe if we were going to lose anyways, I'll bolt myself with the Karanos. We'll see. We'll see. I'm never going to, I'm not going to say no, because let's be honest. All right, so we're looking for bolts, paths, and more Snapcaster Mages. I always find it, found it kind of silly that you get... Your, the professional players translate their paper into a benefit on Magic Online, but playing a bunch of Magic Online doesn't translate to any benefit in paper. It's weird that it's a, it's a one-way street, in my opinion. This card is very, very good against us. Um, are we cold to that in the 75? We have one copy of Settle the Wreckage and two copies of PNK. Okay, we have, we're okay. We're okay post-board. It's going to be tough to race game one, though. So these four cards all answer. All answer edge champion. All right. I'm going to go ahead and set this up. I'm going to double bottom here. We don't need more lands at this point. Yeah, settles really good in this format, Nox. It's, it's actually more common in non-controlling decks, too. I guess our deck has some creatures with spell color, but, like, in creature-based decks, it's a one-sided sweeper, so you can, like, play it in your aggro deck, basically. I'm just going to concede here. There's no way we're beating two edge champions without any way to remove it. All right, so we're going to do something. Oh, I have an engineered explosives, too. Okay, sweet. You're not... When I said we were cool to that, I was very, very wrong. All right, so we're going to do something that we're going to do a lot tonight. I'm going to take these Jace the Mind Sculptors and I'm put them in the sideboard where they probably belong. Good one. You did miss the prison deck, Justin. We just wrapped up. We played a two and a half hour league. Played a two and a half hour league with it. All right. I'm boarding in enough expensive things that I probably just want to cut these cryptic commands, right? I think that's ideal. I'm just going to do that. Let's do this. Give it a try. See how it feels. Put the four drop, lose the game button in the sideboard. Yep. But remember, chat, Jace the Mind Sculptor is going to ruin the format. Just, just like Stoneforge Mystic would. I think that's my favorite thing about these unbannings is the number of people that like were Stoneface, Jace will ruin modern, and then Jace didn't ruin modern, and now they're, they're like, well, Stoneforge Mystic would certainly ruin modern. 
And it's like, weren't you wrong about Jace? Couldn't we just like maybe accept that you're also wrong about Stoneforge Mystic? We did really go 3-2. I punted one match and we got completely dumpstered by Kiki Kord. Kiki Kord's very good against prison decks. Kiki Kord was bound to have a good matchup somewhere, right? Kiki Kord doesn't have many good matchups, but the few that it does. Is tomorrow an early stream or early stream? Tomorrow's an early stream, Niviki, so Thursday and Friday are morning streams. Thursday and Friday are morning streams. I might stream Friday night, though, as well. I think I'm going to do a bunch of evening streams this weekend, like Friday night and then after the Grand Prix on Saturday and Sunday. The, the donation decklist queue is long and dark, and I need to put in some extra hours to try and hack through it. I think, I've got, I think we had, like, 10 decks to add to it today because someone sent in a donation for six leagues, so we will we will be adding some time in there. This scene's pretty good. This scene's pretty good. If you like morning streams, you're going to love my new summer schedule. My summer schedule, when the kids get, uh, when Jake's out of school, I think I'm going to be doing Monday, Tuesday, Thursday from 9-ish a.m. Central Standard Time until like 5 or 6 in the afternoon slash evening. So do, do three long daytime streams and then one or two evenings. <laughs> Sounds good, Niviki will do. All right, so this is an easy hollowed fountain here. So we have all of our colors. Looking for lands and removal. I think P I think we're a little bit off of wanting Pia. I'm in for another path to exile though. I think I'm going to play the Flooded Strand here because there's a pretty good chance we only want to use one mana this turn. And if we only want to use one mana, this way we can fetch a tap land with the Flooded Strand plus play the Opt. And if they do play something that we want to path this turn, we can fetch Basic Plains Path plus Opt. These Ornithopters are gorgeous. I really like the artwork on these Kaladesh, um, whatever you want to call them. The whatever you want to call them. So we're going to fetch before we opt, because if we bottom a card, we don't want to immediately shuffle it back into our deck. Where did you put your debit card? In my wallet. Where's your wallet? Um, upstairs somewhere. Okay, I'm using it at the ATM. I'm getting money that I owe my mom. Ooh! Ooh! And then I'm going to get money to pay her next week. Sounds good. Just so we have it ready. Um, a little leftover 200 next week, and then... Uh, what else? Where are you going, going for dinner? Um, we're getting chicken, so I will heat you up some pizza. Thank you. After I get back. No, heat me up pizza now. No, I gotta go. I'm so hungry. That's not true. I ate a bunch of chocolate. I'll be okay. Gear up here. Aether grid. That's rude. That's rude. I wanted your cards not to do anything, opponent. I wanted, I wanted your cards not to do anything. Why'd you play a card that lets your cards do stuff? Maybe I was supposed to board in Celestial Purge. I actually can't take this card off the table, right? We're actually we're actually just like cold to this card. Huh. That's really unfortunate for me. Oh, I boarded in one copy of Wear Tear. You're right. We have one Wear Tear. You're right, Burgle. You're right, Chad. I forgot I had one. Oh, we have an EE, too. We have an Engineered Explosives, too. Engineered Explosives will take your period through good right on off the table. Right? No, I boarded out Cryptic because it's really slow and clunky. Can can definitely kill gear up here, Aether Grid with Engineered Explosives. That is That is definitely a play we can make. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this Queller into play. <laughs> we 
We are in fact playing Jeskai Combo. We should change the stream title to Jeskai Combo. On the back of a couple of helixes, we could potentially race our opponent here. If we see some of those. Nanbo number five. Boom, 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 boom. What's the combo? The combo is Tony Silence plus Engineered Explosives. Duh. Duh. So if they animate a Blink Moth Nexus here, they can deal two to us. Yeah, I agree. I need to kill some of their stuff before they can deal damage to they can deal, before they can kill the Quiller. No, I want to save the Snapcaster Mage for a Lightning Helix, ideally, I think. I think I ideally want to save it for a Lightning Helix to help me race. More lands is not ideal. Maybe I should have saved this in case this attacks. Yeah, that path timing was probably a little loosey-goosey. Little loosey goosey. So this is four artifacts, so they can't kill the spell crawler yet, which is ideal. I can snap back electrolyzed next turn and draw another card. Looking for wear chair, looking for elect looking for helix at this point. Maybe you can make an argument that I'm just supposed to like snap serum visions here. Maybe I'm just supposed to snap serum visions depending on what we draw. It's a bolt, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna snap serum visions here actually. I'm gonna fetch a basic plane so that way if I bottom some stuff we don't redraw it. I'm gonna go ahead and snap serum visions. Just like dig, 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 looking for specific answers. This might also like take a ping out of them. I don't think we're winning this race at all, right? Bolt snap bolt, I'm still on a five turn clock and they've got us on a five turn clock. Although I guess if they stop to, maybe you're right Burgle. Genuinely didn't count it. This is actually not what I'm looking for right now, right? We just get to see a bunch of cards there, so... And we've bottomed three things, two things, so... Here's open. I'm gonna leave up this path in case they attack with the Blink Moth again next turn. Snappy down. Snappy down. I do need to keep their artifact count under six so they can't kill the spell queller. So this is this is the fifth artifact. Well, I guess if they just play one more artifact out of their hand here, they could have like put motored down the spell queller. Just have a land, sure. Uh, it doesn't really matter the timing on this, I guess. So we're currently dead in five. We have them dead in six, so we're behind here. They can also like chump block the spell caller if they want. Okay. Am I supposed to send these upstairs or am I supposed to kill the ornithopters with them? I think I'm just supposed to try and surprise kill them, right? I'm pretty sure I'm just supposed to surprise, surprise kills them. I need to hit them four times with this, which means we're winning the race by a small margin. 
If I motorboat down the Ornithopters, I go to eight, and then I'm on an eight turn clock versus a six turn clock on them. So it's pretty similar. Yeah, I'm gonna hold the bolts for now, just because if like I draw like Snapcaster Mage or something like that, we could potentially have even more reach. So just wait and see here, I think. Really wish we were drawing Helixes. Honestly, I kind of like Helix more than Bolton decks like this a lot of the time. So I might be inclined to... That's true too. Like the Ornithopters like threatening to kill the Spellcrawler is a big deal. And we lost game one, right? Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, we lost. We conceded two edge champions. And we said this matchup's good for us, but like we've bought them two lands. This is our what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is our eighth land. Yeah, that's true too. Our average draw quality is just better. Yeah, I think because I drew another brick here, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, just kill these Ornithopters. I'm just going to go ahead and kill two of these things. I think I should have just killed both of them last turn. I think it was incorrect to wait. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with the assessment that like, we're the better long game deck. <sighs> we're going to take two here down to six, and then we're on a six turn clock, and they're on a five turn clock, but like any artifact draw out of them increases their clock by by cuts their clock in half so we also have four snaps in our deck to like snap electrolyze kill the sword Thopter, plus speed our clock up a little bit And we're dead. Basically dead. At least we finally found a colonnade. It, it's honestly, um, the fact that we drew so many lands and didn't have a colonnade till right now is really a big part of why we lost this game, right? Like, one of the reasons why Jeskai is such a powerful deck is because when it floods like this, you tend to be able to kill them very quickly with colonnade. And if one of our first 10 lands would have been a colonnade, we probably would have won this race by a pretty significant margin. But because we're just getting to the colonnade now, I think it's probably should be too little too late in combination with this etch champion. We're going to four here, so we're dead to any artifact off the top of their deck. We need to draw like a non Dark Steel Citadel land. A non Dark Steel Citadel non creature land. They need to draw like Glimmer Void or Spire of Industry here. Or like a second copy of Gear Appear Aether Grid. So, a little bit of bad beats here. Too slow, Yana. Too slow. Gotcha. Near, near. Dead. So if those don't see it, they attack with this for two, they animate this, and then they ping us for two. Wow. <laughs> wow. All right, the bad beats were not stopping. Bad beats were not stopping. Let's get some better ones here. And that, that is why I try... That is why I try to not play the $12 leagues because even when you hit your good matchups, you can lose because that's magic. So why gamble more? I don't have any use for qualifier points. So someone asked me the other day when we were talking about price splitting and top eights, they're like, what do you always split? I was like, yes, I always split because that happens. You can get a very good matchup like that and just get o 2 would by it. Because that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Yeah, any controller mid-range deck you cite in Azkanta. I'm actually not a huge fan. 
of Ads Canta in general because like I guess it's not strictly true I don't know it's just like a tough call because like I feel like a lot of the decks that you want Ads Canta against also have access to Field of Rune uh Lightning Helix is only a three of in this configuration Hat Crab smells like Dean Spirit Valley will be real annoying. Yep. My body is ready to path the Mantis Rider. There's only three colonnades as well. Mmm. That's another good chocolate with a creamy. Creamy center that was delicious. I think Gideon Ally of Zendikar is a better a better format of Planeswalker in modern in general. The card creates a better board presence and it closes much faster. The problem, look no numbers, is that if I don't take those things off the table, they're going to get to they're gonna to get to kill my spell color, and then I go from a little bit behind to even more behind. At the point in which I bolted their ornithopters, they were one artifact away from killing my spell color and getting another artifact on the board that pressured me even more. Yeah, Jason the sideboard seems fine. Jason the sideboard seems fine. Kind of, but you're not playing the card to ramp with it. So, like, my point is, if you're boarding in this card with the goal of having it be a grindy card, and they already have a bunch of answers to it, you might as well just play a different grindy card. What the fuck is this? Are they actually playing Eldrazi in taxes? Are they playing Eldrazi in taxes? That's a weird one of in their aggro deck. Probably, I'm assuming it's a one of. So this keeps Thalia at home as well. I hope we get ranched by that. We have another, another lieutenant here. Bunt count infinity. With the 22-month massive tier 3 resub. Thank you very much for that big resub and welcome back. Pun count, I do appreciate that. Be sure to drop me a DM in private. Let me know what you want your donation deck list for the month to be. Um, so I'm going to play this out. I'm going to pass the turn here. A zero Volska with the brand new Twitch Prime support. I really appreciate that. Subscriptions are what keep me going here. They're the reason I have been able to start doing this full time. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. What are we doing, opponent? So, uh, Reflector Mage. They made Black Mana's main deck Xanthrid Necromancer. Weird. Strange. This is a weird land to play instead of cavern, though. It's like a really weird land to play instead of cavern. Peace, Civ Master. Thanks for stopping by. So we're going to 11 here. This fetch is going to put us to 10. Hopefully we don't get Reflector Mage. Then our whole our whole house of cards comes crumbling down here. Ooh. Jace the Unsummoned Sculptor. 
So powerful. So powerful. Jace the Unsummoned Sculptor. Man, imagine if this was like any other playable modern card, how good it would be right now. I think I'm just letting this happen, right? I'm gonna like electrolyze Thalia in response. Yeah, I think that's the line. I guess this makes their lieutenant bigger, which is kind of sucks for me. This will let them take one of these two things, but like, I think that's okay as well. If we're really lucky, we'll draw a bolt here and bolt this kite sail. Maybe even the Thalia's Lieutenant. It would be better as Architect of Thought. In this matchup, for sure. In this matchup, Architect of Thought would be much better. Well, I don't seem to have anything left over, so that's good for us. Any particular reason to not counter tap? Well, if I was gonna counter, it'd be counter draw. I wanted to take the Thalia off the table for it to stop pressuring my health total, and I want I don't have a lot of resources left over, so I want to use them as efficiently as possible. So I feel like counter tapping is like not getting the most value out of my resources when like card quality is like kind of my bottleneck here. The Celestial Colony's got a real text box, though. Jace protected our cryptic, right? Meddling Mage. Are we dead? I'm feeling pretty dead. We're on a three here. Oh, God, don't have another one. Your reflector mage didn't die. Holy shit. God. I'm just gonna lose to affinity into humans with just guy control. No, stop it, desk. I'm sad and I need to sit down. Enjoy the sad ride down, Twitch chat. Oh. Just take these Jace the Mind Sculptors and calmly slide them out of my deck here because they are terrible. I think I'm just not going to accept any more donation deck lists that have Jason the main deck. I think that's just going to be going to be the plan moving forward. We just do no more. If your deck has Jason the Mind Sculptor in the main deck, I'm just going to come to the conclusion you haven't played games with it. I mean, like, like someone mentioned earlier, like 80-20 matchups still have that 20%. Sometimes, sometimes you just run them down. Sometimes they put Jace in their deck for some reason and they die. The chat suggests countering the Aether Vial activation with Cryptic. Yeah, I agree, Burgle. I agree. That's just like, that's a, just a numbers example. I don't actually have any stats here. I'm happy with my chair. I can't keep a hand that doesn't do anything till three in this matchup, right? All right. I guess that's a keep. It's a good one to have. Probably just gonna play this for two on two.
probably play Glacial Fortress into Vendiclick next turn. Yeah, you're not wrong, Be Rich. But even like trading this for like two creatures is like a win, right? I don't need a total blowout. These are my cards. My card is mediocre. Well, I mean, Spellskite didn't wane in popularity because of Fatal Push. Uh, Uplift is the is the desk. Those fuckers really need to pay me for advertising. I've sold so many of their desks. Sold. So many of their desks. Uh, I'm gonna take a spell caller here, I think. You know, the only prize is me taking I don't have any good liquor here. The the liquor that Mike and, and uh, Matt both like to drink is rancid. One of Christie's, one of Christie's coworkers brought over some Huckleberry vodka last weekend two weekends ago. I'm like, that was actually quite pleasant. So I might have to pick some of that up for when we want to do shots around here. Just super fucking dead. I'm not sure I can trade Vendillion Click. I didn't Glacial Fortress there because the odds of me drawing a two mana spell that I'm interested in be going to be able to cast are very, very low. And when I bottom something with my Serum Visions, I don't want to redraw it right away. Yeah, the Tito's is, was really bad. Like, as far as like a straight shock goes, it was really bad. And like the Huckleberry, the Huckleberry vodka tasted like candy. And as a, a middle-aged white woman, I enjoy drinks that taste like candy, chat. As someone with the alcohol preferences of a 40 something white woman, let me tell you about let me tell you about flavor candy flavored alcohol. Oh man, we lost like 20 viewers. They must have been offended about the Tito's too. I, I don't I don't drink beer either. Like the only alcohol I only started drinking alcohol very recently. I never drank alcohol in my my younger years. And basically I only I only drink only drink things that are flavored. If you're gonna poison yourself at least it's right. That's what I'm saying. Uh <sighs> I think I'm trading, I think I'm trading this click for a Mantis Rider here. All right, let's spot check what's in their hand and trade for a Mantis Rider. No, I just assumed, and maybe it was a bad assumption that I just assumed that they were going to put a, a Thalia's Lieutenant into play and then my Engineered Explosives would clean up the Thalia's Lieutenant. So like, um, what's it called? Phantasmal Image was the only two drop I cared about there. So we're gonna crack this Kite Sailed Freebooter or this Engineered Explosives next turn. No, image is an exact copy of their creature, so it's a three cost. Might be, might be a fast just Kai League.
Take three. They're scared of another settle here, which is reasonable. They saw the first one. Because you enter the mid-range bracket. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have faith bro we can lose to a mid-range deck this hitting our six land here is actually good right because it means my celestial colonnade can fire up to block this it also means i can just do that let's just take my two for one go All right, your move. Yeah, we're in a good spot here. About <laughs> aggro deck drew six lands, control deck looking to be in a good position. Get out of here. This is game two. I didn't even know humans played that many lands, right? Right. I think I'm just gonna end step spell color here and then just like try and three turn clock them. If they like build up a board presence, we can like hold back and settle them, but I think just trying to kill them is the line here. Two more turns. They have to play many lands, otherwise how would they activate Mirror Pool, right? Am I getting Phantasmal imaged? Are they Phantasmal imaging my Celestial Colony? That's not gonna work out well for them. I guess they could be just copying the spell queller. Yeah, yeah, that one. That one's not gonna work out for you, bud. The actual gameplay in Pokemon TCG is A+. I spent like three months playing a fuck ton of Pokemon TCG. And then I played my first competitive Pokemon TCG event and watched enough scumbaggery and cheating that I've never touched it again. Pokey scum, what a good command. What an A plus command. That phantasmal image it is in fact copying a colonnade. Should be a green black creature land, right? <laughs> read, read the Poka Scum link. Read the Poka Scum link. If you if you want to know how bad, if you want to if you want to think to yourself, the Pokemon when he says the Pokemon was scummy and bad, he can't really mean it was that bad. Read the link. You'll be you'll change your mind. It isn't even so much that there might even not even necessarily be more cheating at Pokemon events. It's the way that their rules allow for people to take advantage of the game. Which is really sad in a way, because like, the actual gameplay in Pokemon TCG, I can only describe as A+. 
In fact, if there was if there was a market for people that wanted to watch people stream Pokemon TCG, I would definitely stream some Pokemon TCG. Sadly, the community for watching people stream Pokemon TCG on Twitch is like smaller than the Hex community. Which it feels weird to me, but that was a comparable viewer numbers. Their planes is in their hand. God bless. How do they beat this hand? Hopefully they don't. Found a piece of candy, chat. Found a piece of candy. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Not gonna lie, I was a little bit disheartened when we lost game one. Game two is looking pretty decent. Dece plus maybe even. I'm gonna helix this in response because the fact that I shocked in could be telling that I had a helix. They actually banned that deck too, Hilarious Max. They they banned uh, the Leaf Stadium in Expanded. Wait. They missed a land drop, but they also didn't get a path, a plane from the path. Weird. They just like forget to play a land last turn. They must have just forgotten to play a land last turn, right? I'm gonna electrolyze this meddling mage in response to this freebooter. Like, as far as the, as far as the gameplay goes, honestly, I think Pokemon's probably one of the lower variance games that I've played. Like, Pokemon is extremely low variance. All the decks are very consistent. I think the only game I've played, card game I've played, that felt lower variance than Pokemon TCG was Epic. And Epic, Epic's quite excellent, to be fair, but they don't release that many sets. No, I wanted to just use my mana that turn, Javier. I wanted to use my mana that turn, and they're likely to just take the explosives if I don't. I guess I could have waited, but no, I, I just wanted to spend my three that turn, I think. I guess maybe you could argue that I could snap path that turn, which would have been fine. You mean the coin flip attacks? So Pokemon makes up for the variance that coin flip attacks have by the fact that everything else in the game is lower variance than magic. Like all of all of the decks, like magic has imprinted good cantrips into standard in a long time. Pokemon decks are like mono cantrips and demonic tutors. It's fantastic. Your decks do what they want to do almost every single game. The mobile version just had a very a very slick update and when when they finally get the last couple of sets, so their mobile client is missing their last two paper sets. When they add those, I'm probably going to stream a little bit of Epic. Well, I wait for the third match of this league to pop. I'd just like to say welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, afternoon, and good night to everybody or everyone in the world. We have a little over 900 people hanging out. I do appreciate that. Who am I? I am Jeff Hoagland. I'm a full-time TCG player, streamer, memer, whatever you want to call it here on Twitch. Um, if you're enjoying my content here and you want to help me make more of this content, please consider subscribing on Twitch. My subscribers are the reason I'm able to do what I do as often as I do it. You can also support my stuff by supporting my sponsors. MTGOTraders.com would love to buy and sell some Magic Online cards with you. And if you use code Hoagland PayPal at checkout with them, you'll save 8% on your singles orders there. CoolStuffInc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. Using promo code Jeff5, you can save 5% on Magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. InkGaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience using code Jeff12. You can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, binders, and bags with them. And finally, this stream is made possible by viewers like Anironics and you. Anironics would like to remind you at the very least, please make sure you hit that follow button. It doesn't cost you anything. It'll let you know when I go live and with what, so you can get notifications for all that jazz. Sand seems pretty reasonable. Two pieces of removal, a spell crawler, and plenty of lands. Professional mana monkey exile. I mean, that comes with Mima, right? So, I actually think it's really funny that to, when I hear Magic players talk about Pokemon having zero interaction, I actually think Pokemon, on average, is a lot more interactive than Magic. What you're referring to Pokemon not having is Pokemon doesn't have a stack. 
Pokemon doesn't have instant speed interaction. Pokemon as a game is interactive by definition because you win games of Pokemon by having your resources, your Pokemon, the things you're putting energies on, directly attack their resources. So I think calling Pokemon non-interactive is completely disingenuous and factually wrong. Now, if you said, I don't like that there isn't instant speed interaction in Pokemon, I would agree with you. The game does not have instant speed interaction in it. That is completely honest and, and genuine and reasonable assessment. People enjoy the back and forth of the stack that Magic has. Honestly, coming, coming from a Magic background, I kind of found the lack of a stack in Pokemon therapeutic to a degree. Which sounds, which sounds kind of weird to say, because it was kind of nice to know that, like, if I was going to do my thing, I got to just, like, do my thing and then pass to you and then you interacted. Whereas, like, the games flow, the games flow a lot more smoothly, right? Because I know I'm going to get to go and then you're going to get to go. So... The important thing to recognize if you've never played Pokemon TCG before is the way their, um, their what's it called cards, their, um, people always compare it to Ancestral Recall, um, but like those cards aren't actually Ancestral Recall because the resource system in Pokemon works drastically differently than the resource system in Magic because of how their, um, I don't remember what the special trainer card is called. The special, there's a special type of trainer, a supporter, I think. Yeah, supporters. You can only play one supporter per turn. I probably should have played the Flooded Strand because it would give me an extra card to delve for my Logic Knot. Though they actually don't have a chess clock, which is fucking miserable. The, the Pokemon could very easily has a chess clock. And one of the big reasons why... Yeah, definitely post the picture from Milwaukee. Um, one of the big reasons that I stopped playing Pokemon is because their rules allow for intentional stalling. Do Pokemon games take a while? Yeah, they're usually pretty long and interactive, which is a plus for me in my book. That's a great picture. That's a fantastic picture. Yeah, the, the introduction of supporters changed the game pretty drastically from my understanding. Supporters didn't always always exist and they were a good, good addition. Read read the Poka Scum report. Read the Poka Scum report. It talks about that. We're in an okay spot here until Cavern of Souls rears its ugly head. Celestial Colony looking pretty good here because it's going to put us in a position to like be able to close a turn sooner. In the second path, actually, we might be able to play through a Cavern of Souls even. my lovely wife and she brought me dinner i love you wife yeah i know yeah i know I'm great. you are great the watch thing is super weird the watch thing is super weird another another snapcaster mage is excellent here Gonna increase our clock by a lot. Yeah, I'm eating leftover pizza from last night. Going and eating leftover pizza for the next couple of days.
if two people tell different stories in a magic tournament for one the fact that they had different stories gets logged two judges would talk to the surrounding people and the ultimate big difference between pokemon and magic in this instance is in magic they wouldn't have awarded a double game loss they would have told us they would have just nullified the game or they would have basically told us that the game we played that was being disputed didn't happen if they couldn't determine that someone was lying so like this and that's the solution i was expecting i was like oh okay like this person was scum and lied to the judge but they can't take my word against theirs realistically without a third party backing me up. So like, they're just gonna nullify the game and I'm gonna have to win two more games because of this. When the solution was the person lied to their judge type person and then they're like, oh, the, the solution is a double game loss, which since your opponent won game one, they win the match, which the person I was playing against like had played a lot of competitive Pokemon, they told me during the match when we were making small talk. So like they 10 out of 10 knew the result of what was going to happen before they before they called the judge. I think I'm just bottoming both of these, right? No, the Path to Exile is probably fine just in case I need to kill a third Titan. These decks don't play Hive Mind anymore, generally speaking. Ban Soy Products 2018. Thank you very much for the 213 subscription. No, I pretty much stopped playing Hex. I guess I could have logic knotted this. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe I should have logic knotted that. I'm glad I kept another. Actually, once I path this here, they'll just be dead on board to the Celestial Colonnade, right? Should be. I guess they could get, j no. Is there an unplayable JC mode? There probably should be, right, at this point. If I'm being completely honest, part of the reason I stopped playing Hex is because the price of playing their game is like exceedingly outrageous right now. Like most of the tiered decks in their constructed format are upwards of two to $300. And their economy doesn't support selling back out enough. So like if you invest that amount of money into the game, you don't get most of it back if you want to like turn a deck into something else or sell it again. And like with that in mind, I don't really feel comfortable like promoting it. That's mostly why I've stopped streaming it. All right, so they're not dead this turn because they gained four, but they're dead in two turns. I can logic not a Pact of Negation if they had it here, and then hopefully with this other path on top of my deck, this game's pretty much going to be locked up. They also have to pay for a Summoner's Pack next turn, so... Pass ended up being pretty good. Yeah, not not only not only the price being cheaper, but they also removed the way that you could grind value in on-demand constructed events. So in addition to hex constructed being really expensive to play, you also can't really make any of your money back outside of their bash tournaments on the weekends. So if you can't play the bash tournaments, you basically are, are like kind of Screwed out of playing constructed. No, I've not, Krigger. All right, so we're going to take these Jace the Mind Sculptors and put them in the fucking sideboard because he shouldn't be in our deck. Maybe one copy. I'm going to put in Disdainful Stroke. I actually like boarding in Dispel in this matchup because Dispel allows us to... Um, what's the word I'm searching for? It allows us to counter their packs, which is important because packs is how they chain Titans together. I am super pumped for Artifact. I'm super pumped for Artifact. 
when we in fact i've i've already talked to my wife when artifact if artifact goes into public public testing this summer i plan to um what's the word i'm searching for i plan to like double up my streaming schedule so i can do like 20 to 30 hours a week of artifact in addition to magic Yeah, for those that aren't in the loop, Artifact is a Dota card game that's being created by Valve and it's being designed by Richard Garfield. It is going to be likely going to be very sweet. Likely going to be very sweet. I am excited to jump in and make. Yes, and not only is it being created by Valve and designed by Richard Garfield, it's going to be a full trading card game. And they said it's going to be explicitly not free to play which for someone like me not having to hear about all this ridiculous it's free to play you just gotta grind for 1200 hours jeff just grind for 1200 hours i hate that shit it's so annoying i just want to like play a game with real decks and not grind shitty miserable decks for 1200 hours or however many hours your free to play system is so i am I am super excited. Richard Garfield's been quoted multiple times that he doesn't think magic works well in the digital media, and he's not wrong. Yeah, it is digital only. I'm gonna shock this in just in case they play Azusa. This also represents like Mana Leak or something. Garfield has designed a lot of games in general. Did any magic card that costs more than $5 and the game as a whole is failed? Yeah. So in Valve's talk, they talked about and this is why i'm really i'm really excited like valve knows how to get people to spend money and i think valve is going to be one of the games one of the or one of the companies excuse me that's really going to understand you don't have to have decks cost two and three hundred dollars for to get people for your game to be successful that you can make more money by having your game cost less money so more people can play it like that, that is something I think Valve really understands. Like Valve, Valve is really good at getting people to spend. Super happy about the Just Guy stream. Thank you, Van Soy Products for the bits. I appreciate it. I played this Bell Queller out naked here because I do need to just start killing my opponent. No, I'm not putting ketchup on pizza. It's sweet and tart dressing and it's very good. It's sweet and tart dressing. It's tasty. This pizza chain Monocles explicitly sells it to put on your pizza. And Valve being smart is one of the things that gives me hope even though their game's not explicitly free to play, it'll probably still be reasonably cost, reasonably priced. Also, if you're a mostly a Magic player that doesn't do a lot of video games, you're not personally familiar with Valve that much, Valve doesn't really make non-successful games. Valve doesn't put out, they're like Blizzard. They don't put out a lot of total titles and the few titles they put out tend to be very successful. Valve is in no way sponsored the stream, but I would love it if they did. Please Valve, send me, send me artifact shit. Send me artifact shit. My mother shipped us two containers. It's very good, Ralk. It's very good. Whoa, do they not have a Cavern of Souls? I don't... I can't remember the last time this deck cast a Primeval Titan against me and it didn't involve a Cavern of Souls. I can't even remember. Am I about to get... 
Am I about to get dispelled here or swan songed? I'm about to get swan songed, right? All right, I'm gonna counter this. Unless they pay two so I can quell her, quell her a swan song. Or quell her a pact of negation. Rats, I felt so smart and thin. I thought I was gonna get him. Yeah, maybe I should have just cryptic did for the resource efficiency there. Hmm. If I cast this, I can't cryptic. Yeah, I'm just gonna wait. Just hold my cryptic up. Superman does good. I played that well. Okay, they had a spell pierce. So I'm going to let them have this trigger resolved before they know I'm pathing them. They shouldn't... Oh, they could try and haste me here, right? Yeah, this Uvo. I'm pretty sure they said they intend to use the Steam Marketplace, but I could be. Don't quote me on that. If you do some Googling, there's been some early screenshots of artifact stuff. I probably should have let this bounce trigger resolve before I showed them that I was pathing their thing, but details. They're probably returning Vesuva either way. That's a bull. That's a Snapcaster Mage, so... I'm going to go bottom, top, because I hit them to six here. I get to quell or something next turn, bolt them, untap, snap, bolt them. They have another Titan. They can get Radiant Fountain here. There's a third Titan. That's annoying. Whoa! I remember when someone was asking, how do we beat the hive mind win? And I was like, they don't play hive mind anymore. That sure shows me. All right, well, we're gonna spell Queller the crap out of this summoner's pact. <sighs> My summoner's pact, fucking get rid of it. Do you have another one? God, they have another one. That's really frustrating. I don't think that changes how I sideboard at all. No, I lose to my pack trigger during my upkeep chat. So I don't get to draw the Snapcaster Mage. I don't get to draw the Snapcaster Mage. This hand's okay. Not exciting, but fine. Ding. I should technically serum visions first to give them less info about my hand, but it's pretty minimal either way. And go top top here and pass. Yeah, it's real bad. It's not it's not a good scene. It's not it's not a good scene. I'm not going to opt because I want to draw the card that's on top of my deck, I think. Or maybe I'm just supposed to opt to power through it and like be resource efficient. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, what do they play that I could really care about? Like Azusa, I guess? Yeah, so like I draw it either way, but like if I potentially like, let's say the card under the Celestial Colonnade isn't a card I want, I could scry that card away with Opt. But honestly, at this point, I kind of want lands and spells. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and cycle this through this turn. It really sucks that we lost a game where they didn't have Cavern. Usually those games are ours to win. Hmm. Playing the Opt last turn also lets me Snap Opt this turn. So I probably don't care about this at this point. Well, I guess Snap Bolting, it's probably okay. We're pretty cold to Titan here. Are not, however, cold to negate. Cold to summoners back because we have a negate. Like chicken nuggets? I think wolves will probably tear a carton of chicken nuggets limb from limb, right? I'm gonna go ahead and snap opt here. I need more, more action. Killing the Azusa doesn't really matter at this point. She's already done what she's supposed to do. Basketball team. See, I knew someone would tell me what sport if I, if I made fun of it. Another Snapcaster, double logic knot. I'm gonna take one of these. I'm not gonna take the second because the first one's probably gonna tap my graveyard almost completely out. If they hit exactly Titan this turn, I'm gonna be in trouble. If they don't have exactly Titan, they hit exactly Titan. I'm gonna like float a fuck ton of mana here and then I can't win. I feel like we got pretty unlucky here. <sighs> That's pretty frustrating. So we're very dead here. I could have like, I could have snapped Serum Visions and then I'd have Logic Knot for X's six here. Or X's, yeah, X's six. Maybe I was supposed to snap Serum Visions and have Logic Knot. I don't know, holding up Spell Queller slash Snap Negate is pretty appealing, I think. I don't, I don't have a Logic Knot, chat. The Logic Knot's on top of my deck. The Logic Knot was on top of my deck. So may, maybe I was supposed to snap Serum Visions to draw into the Logic Knot. I don't know. If they draw anything that's not exactly one of their four Titans there, like even a Pact, I can quell her. Like, obviously, it's easy if we have a Logic Knot. We just cast the Logic Knot and counter their stupid Titan. Yeah, I think it's Hindsight, too. I think it's correct to just leave up Snap Negate slash Spell Queller there. Yeah, the Alling Mind deck's a hoot. It's a lot of fun. Generates some good games of magic. I 
I don't know that I have it in me to play this Grixis Kiki deck tonight. I think this deck has like Jace in the main deck as well. Yeah, I don't know that I can do this after this. I think I'm, I think we're gonna pull up a meme. Maybe we will play Tron tonight. Niviki, do you have a Tron list that you like? You sounded like you had some specifics that you like. Do you have a Tron list? Justin Els with the two month Twitch Prime. Oh, L6 sent me, L6 sent me a deck. The fuck not, oh geez. Whoa, oh lordy. Maybe we'll do this. Not, not the bees. Elsick, yeah, okay. All right, yeah, we'll do that next. We'll do that next. I can't, I can't play another shitty control deck tonight. That was, I should have bolted this in response to this, but. Oh, we played the blue red prison deck tonight, actually. I'm just gonna like right click concede if they have a lightning bolt here. I should have done this in response to the prowess trigger. We're just gonna get totally, totally pucker up for this prowess trigger here. Ding, not punished. Who can focus after seeing that beauty really, right? I think you'll play one in the main. You might play more than one in the sideboard. Like you might play an additional one in the sideboard, but definitely playing one in the main. To be or not to be. This is another matchup where I wish I had four lightning helix in my deck. If you're going to play Jeskai, show up with four lightning helix chat. That's my... That's my takeaway from what we've played so far. God bless us, everyone. This is just, oh uh, yeah, just, can you taste it? Can you taste it, Mr. Krabs? Helix you. Uh. Stop it. Die. Glacial is actually a pretty good draw here. Lightning Helix me, how about Lightning Helix you opponent? What if I, if I had a million Helix, if I had a million Helixes, I would blast them at your face. I would blast them at your face. Do 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 Just casually gain six here. But it's, but it's eventually going to draw like a third to fourth land, right? You only need one academy, Hat Crab. You only need one academy. One Singleton Academy. Look at that. They drew a third land. How about you draw a fourth land now? We did play the prison deck already, JMP. Deck is still really sweet. You're definitely going to see more of that on the stream. In fact, the more the more I play it, the more I'm inclined to think I might I might make that deck that we have a donation goal for for uh, the Louisville Open. You drew a creature. It's adorable. Path it. Oh look, you're dead. Snap, bolt you. Untap, H you. Snap, bolt you. Untap, H you. Hmm. 
Mm, can you taste it, Mr. Burn Player? Mr. or Mrs. Burn Player, do you taste it? Who's the burn deck now, opponent? Who's the burn deck now? Uh, I punted a match to Jund, and then we ended up three and two because we got run over by Kiki Cord. Just guy control is like the thinking person's burn deck. It's like the thinking person's burn deck. Just get him. Just get him. Oh, geez. I still have chocolates here in front of me for after my pizza. I think the prison deck is very good as well. 10 out of 10 agree. Harden. And now I'm going to take these Jace the Mind Sculptors and board them out because that's what you do with fucking Jace the Mind Sculptor. You board him out. It sucks when you only have a 73 card deck, right? We bought a lot of pizza last night. So. Definitely gonna see more blue red bridge in this stream. I'm excited, Justin. I'm excited. Justin, in case you missed it, after this Jeskai League, we're going to close out with this meme. This Zach Elsick provided meme, which sounds glorious, not the bees. Pretty easy mulligan here. Is this, I feel like, how does the prison deck win game one to Blood Moon? You, you ultra tether it. You can also kill Blood Moon with engineered explosives. Yeah, I am, Justin Ellis. I think I'm going to go to the Kentucky Open next month. I'm looking for... or I think I'm going to put up a goal to try and get me to the Kentucky Open next month. Because bas basically the only way Christy puts up with Opens at this point is if they're paid for. So, um, the blue-red deck feels really powerful, though. So... One of the ways I make my mulliganing decisions with a deck like this and a matchup like this is I think that six was really close. But the way I assess close six and seven card hands in a matchup like this is if I have a very high. Yeah, Justin, I'll add them all. I'll add them all tonight after the stream's done. I always go through after my stream and count up all the donations and add them in. Um, if I. What's the word I'm searching for? If I have a card in my deck that's very powerful in a given matchup and I don't have that card in my opening hand, I always mulligan the close hand that doesn't have my good card. So, hey, Lido, I got five on blue red prison. Yep. I don't know if I'm going to do a costume this time, but I think we're going to have a goal to get me to the open and a small stretch goal to do a 12 hour stream with whatever deck I'm going to play at the open. Yeah, we played Prison Second tonight, so if you missed that, it's going to go up on YouTube after the fact, as always. I'm going to cast the Serum Visions in Take Two. None of those are Lightning Helix. I just want to make sure I have the top five decks in the queue, Jeff. It's my goal. Sounds good, Justin. I think we're going to wait on... 
playing more Blue Red Prison until next weekend because I really want to play Dampening Sphere in the Prison deck. I think Dampening Sphere will add and change lines to the deck, so I don't really want to spend a bunch of time focusing on learning the deck and the lines when some of the lines are going to be fundamentally different when we get this new tool from Dominaria. So, I think Justin earlier said he was okay with me waiting to play his prison donations until after we get the spear next week. And if we don't hit a helix here, we're going to concede and go to through game three here. I plan to start with Dampening Sphere in the main deck. I plan to start with Dampening Sphere in the main deck for sure. One in the main, and if it feels really good like we want more, honestly, one is probably fine with all the tutors that the deck has. I'm not sure this deck is interested in playing Damping Sphere. New Wave Burrito. I always like burrito recommendations. You can reliably assume that you can keep playing it. It will keep popping up at the top of the queue. <laughs> Sounds good, Justin. Sounds good. Yeah, but, like, you can just not play the Damping Sphere out in those situations. Like, in the matches where the Damping Sphere is not going to be good, you just don't play it and then you board it out. This hand is close and has the card we want in it, so I'm going to keep this. I My gut tells me that the Aether Grids are really good. My gut tells me that the Aether Grids are really good. Uh, Niviki, we're going to play Tron tomorrow morning to start. Innocent Smith, thank you for the 400 bits. I do appreciate that. Do, I think I'm just digging for the land here. I'm not sure I ever make it as far as Houston. I might get down to Dallas this year. Kirsty was talking about wanting to, wanting to go to Dallas. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, chat. Uh, I believe we get Dominaria cards on Magic Online on the 20th, but don't quote me on that. Ding, fries are done. Boom, 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 boom. I believe it's the 20th. I believe it's the 20th. I think one of the Dallas Opens is a team open, though, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get a team together to play at a team open. So we might go for the, I believe in November is or October is the straight modern open. Probably go down for that one. I also don't know if I want to play that many events, too. Like, events are fun, but, like, they're a drain. I also feel worse. I can't really sell myself for a team open. So, like, if I go to a team open, I have to pay for it myself. <laughs> Sell yourself to someone's team. That's not a bad idea. All right, so the Eidolon coming down feels a little bit bad, but we do get to nail it with Helix here. It's unfortunate that we didn't draw a land. We did We did draw a card that we bottomed, though. We just magic online. We'll see. I also don't want to overload that many paper events, too, because, like, 
paper events means I can't stream for that weekend. And like Dallas, if I'm not flying, means I have four days I can't stream. And like, this is this is work, right? I wanna, wanna make sure that this gets done and I enjoy doing this. If we draw some lands, I agree. Our hand is very good. Getting to trade a spell snare for a Boros charm here feels great. No, I just, I just want to make sure that my lightning helix gains me health. I don't want to get fancy. I don't want to get greedy. Just using my helix while my opponent is tapped out and guaranteed gaining myself the health is very good. Yep. Hopefully they play a creature here so I get to use this path to exile. If we if we hit if we connect with one more helix, we should be in a pretty good spot. Then having a fifth land is really good for us. We've played Protean Hulk on the stream before. It's a lot of fun. Check my YouTube channel for the archive of that. We've also pathed them once, right? So, like, they've only drawn four lands here, but still, every land past three is a gift from God. They must have their Searing Blazes boarded out if they're fetching like that, right? I'm gonna go ahead and just get a Steam Vents here. Justin with the $20 donation. This is the start of Team Hoaglandia Team Dallas event with Project Swap and Justin. I'm already in Dallas. <laughs> All right, Justin, we can probably work something out. I really want them to cast a spell here. Because if they cast a spell, I can helix them and then logic not a skull crack. I've not tried the prison deck with any changes yet. I've just been playing card for card what someone submitted initially to me. Probably tomorrow afternoon and Friday and over the weekend, I'm going to do some research on like variations of the prison decks other people have been playing and like try and change and tune things a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and helix my opponent here. If they have double skull crack, they have double skull crack. I can beat one skull crack though, so that feels good. Yeah, J Justin is Justin the enabler. Yep. Justin. Justin is getting close to like Anironics levels of funding the stream. God bless him. So if they have a second skull crack here, we're probably gonna die. Although I guess we get to untap and snap helix. If this resolves, oh baby, that's real good for us. Come on, I enabled two and for a long time. You did JMP, you're not wrong. There are lots of people that have enabled me to do what I do here. There are lots of people. I do appreciate it. I'll even play something besides Lantern if you really want me to. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to snap Helix right now because my opponent would have had to have drawn Skullcrack for their turn to have this not work. I guess you could argue that I should do this during their upkeep. Should do this during their upkeep. Hopefully they didn't draw Skullcrack here. All right, that resolving should mean we're in the clear here. Put hipster hat on. I was here before Jeff Mitchell. That's true. JMP is one of the one of the OG donation deckers. Oh, am I dead still? God, we were so close. Did they rip the four ball and kill us? Thank you for the bits, Brian. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Oh, geez, that's brutal. That's really brutal. Okay, another land's actually pretty good because it means I can bolt and still hold up Cryptic Command. Can we force Jeff to play standard? You probably don't want me to play standard. I remember the time before the shilling. It was a dark time filled with Kiki Cord pre pre shilling Hogland streams. Pre shilling Hogland, it was dark and terrifying. If they have two spells, we're dead here. They can have two two mana spells and kill us through the scripted command. They all end with the Scarab God. Alrighty, please don't kill me. I assume we're dead here. I agree, Velik. The donation decks were are one of the best things we ever added to the stream. GG's opponent. Is that the 1-3? One 1-3. Three? One three. That was Ryan Hip. Ryan Hip. Um, Jeskai Control. Don't play Jace the Mind Sculptor. If you do, he better be in your fucking sideboard. Uh, play four Lightning Helixes. Play a basic Mountain. That's a change I made. Other than that, I don't know. I don't know what else, other else to say. Uh, when in doubt, ask Harlan. Harlan what to do. Harlan's like the Jeskai Whisperer. All right. Should have left a red up in case of drawing bold. That's fair. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's get a dank meme in here. This is a Zach Elsick provided meme. Oh, it's not. Is it formatted weird? Oh, damn it. Open in. I really wish Windows had better. Oh, because they're split cards. No, no. Don't don't download the update now. Dear Windows, all I want from you is a package manager. Can you please just have a package manager? The Just Kai Whisperer Monday on ABC. The bees! The bees! Zach, are there supposed to be through the breaches in here or do you think it's fine with all of without them have you played this deck before what's a package manager do and please don't say manage packages um so you know how on your smartphone all of your application updates are handled through the play store or through apple store that's what a package manager is uh, ios and android mimicked what um what what's it called what uh linux package managers have been doing for decades because it's great it allows all of your software updates to come through a centralized location so you don't have every individual application you have installed on your computer managing its own updates and pestering you every time you launch them i come for the memes not allergies Yeah, it's really, it's really clean. Jeff, we are now in the second trimester. We can let people know moist junk. Thank you for the three month resubscription and welcome back. I do appreciate that. As always, subscriptions are the best way you can support what I do here. Justin with the $20 donation. We could probably force Jeff to play standard, but post Dominaria. I mean, if you want me to play a really terrible standard deck, I'd probably do that for enough money. It's gonna cost you extra though. I don't know if I'd play, I'd play standard for her. Zach, 
Zach said he tested this and through the breach was clunky and not good enough. So I'm I'm gonna trust Zach. I I believe in Mr. Elsec. Plus dead gone is sweet. That plus dead god is sweet. Don't worry, Jeff, we will get you there. All right, I'm gonna have to ch I'm gonna have to double check the dates of the Team Dallas Open and talk to Christy about it so she can talk to her girlfriend. Sweet, super fast delivery. that right yep all right my back is starting to twinge because i've been sitting like a baddie for too long so let's stand up enjoy the ride twitch chat this is gonna be the last league of the evening we'll see how quick this goes if this league goes quickly we might play it i play one more <laughs> project swap and i will in fact get you there make me understand is if i'm not gonna explain this deck to chat because it's like wonder and mystery. You're gonna be like, it's gonna be like Christmas morning when you finally realize what's going on. Never mind, I can't go, I'll be on vacation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 